If you if you can withstand the pain, it is a euphoric experience. It is it for six days before. Yeah, well, let's not talk about that. Never, um, never hallucinated. Um. <sighs> okay. We're we're all here, we're ready to go. Yes. Uh, Kita, where we had last left off with you is you guys had uh, found your way to Onsmar from Kur. You guys had uh, entered the, the Hive City via the harbor side. You had visited the Yawning Wall, had walked past the Second Sail Tavern uh, and in. Uh, you had visited the college where you had met uh, the headmaster, Professor Caster. Uh, he had spoken to you guys about recent events, uh, a little bit of his past, giving you guys some insight on that. Um, from there, you guys had all gone pretty much in your own separate ways. Uh, Draven, you had gone with them to the Rain Brands, where you had kind of gone off on your own with Kate to talk to the other craftsmen there. Uh, mainly, it was Kate's, mainly it was Kate's interest in what was going on there that uh, you wandered off and kind of talked with the other and, and just kind of inspected the, the, the Dark Anvils and what they do there. Uh, you know that they're uh, master forgemen and tinkersmiths, um, armorsmiths, all that stuff. They work well with um, the other guilds around the city. And you're going to get the idea that the rest of the, the other guilds in the city kind of work with one another to make the best out of everything. Um, the glittering note was mentioned many different times by a couple of the different ones. Uh, you had met uh, Wildall, who is one of the master craftsmen there. Uh, he is a halfling. Um, <clears throat> he had kind of given you some insight on the glittering note and the naturals guild and that they go hand in hand with one another where the uh, dark anvils and the rain brands guild there will create items and then send them to the uh, naturals to have enchanted um <clears throat> so none of the actual rain brands do the enchanting themselves although some of them know the basics of it they still don't have the they don't give that um service to the people or their customers, they instead just send them over to the Naturals Guild. So each one of them kind of feeds off of one another. Um, you had then, after the, the rest of the party had departed and gone over to the Glittering Note, where the Naturals Guild is, you had decided to go visit uh, Tanlin Tanker the at the Bouncing Ticket. Uh, you find your way over to... Let me grab a map here. Did we go to the Bouncing Ticker? Nope. Okay, okay. I was going to say, because we were waiting for... We were waiting for Dr for you before we went there. You guys had not visited the bouncing ticker. Exactly. Uh, we were going to go there, but we remembered Draven really wanted to go there, so we waited for him to rejoin us. Yes. Um. So you will be moving. I need to delete this image. You will be moving over to here on the map. This building right here. Which is behind the dark animals. Last thing I knew, we were still at um, the uh, in the library. Is that correct? Yeah, he said me and Kate left. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's enough of that. Um. All those people do is just rev up engines all day long, I swear to God. Um, uh, a bunch of crazy steps. Taking the back alley through the back of the Dark Anvils, you uh, find your way going southwards just across a small alleyway and into another courtyard where there is uh, basically all around this courtyard is just piles of scrap. Uh, there's metal, gears, cogs, there's gadgets, there's gear tools, broken tools, stacks of wood, there's all sorts of stuff. It seems like a small junkyard is in front of this little courtyard where you, where it's basically right, right there where you're at. That's a small courtyard. It's basically just this, this junk pile, heaps of it all over the place. Rusted, non-rusted, there's stainless steel, there's iron, there's bits of metal that you don't quite know what they are uh you and kate just stand there and absolutely in awe as you look around this place when you cross the way you see that there is a front door to an establishment with um, what looks to be a sign a wooden sign 
uh, etched in with metal rivets that says the bouncing ticker on the top of it. Um, going across the courtyard, you, or the junkyard, you uh, go up to the door. Uh, it is it is open. It's just not fully open. It's like halfway open. Uh, do you uh, knock or anything or no? You have to do that kind of knock where it like opens the door. You're like knocking, but the door is moving and you're knocking on it. Okay. Um, coming into the door, you see that it, the state of this place is exactly how you would think it would be, except horribly disorganized. Uh, even in front of the door, as you push the door open, you can feel that there's something in the way that you kind of like push it open, and there like slides something out of the way. Um, it's horribly, horribly out of out of place. Everything is. Um, there's like a random tool that doesn't belong just laying on the floor and next to it is like a pile of gears but did anybody else just get that roman just went when he was talking no no, 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 no. it was the weirdest roll 20 glitch i've ever seen you were like <laughs> um all around this place are mismatched different pieces of i think is some sort of machinery of some kind um making a Actually, make me a perception check. Uh, natural 20 to start it off. Holy shit. Um, all around this room, you can see that there are mechanizations of all kinds in one corner you actually see what looks to be a humanoid looking construct uh partially constructed like one leg it's like sitting on its butt like one leg sticking out the other one is missing one of its arms is halfway built its head is like partially opened up and like splayed out there are things ticking all over this place you're not sure what they are there's clocks or some kind of whatnot Best. From the ceiling hang chains. I'm sure I hooks. recognize the mechanisms. From the ceilings hang. Well, you don't. You've never had experience with any of this stuff. There's, these are. Th I these saw are th a bunch of this in Montreal. I mean, uh, in the Underdark, and then I saw it on the way here too. So it's kind of you know the the mechanisms are familiar. Plus, I yeah, have a book yeah. of it. The sight of the sight of these things isn't what it, you don't recognize. It's that what they what their intended purposes are or whatnot. Those are what you don't understand. Oh yeah, absolutely. Know. From the ceiling hang chains. There's pipes all over the ceiling. Um, some of the pipes are running down the walls and across the floor. Uh, from these chains are hooks that hang different utensils and items and such. And from the back, you hear, as you're walking in and looking around, you hear this like, <laughs> like something falling down across the across the back where there is like this low counter. Um, that, like, is, there's part of it's low and then part of it's really high. It looks like on the low part, there's like tools splayed out with different items and stuff just splayed around on a higher counter that's like bare and clean and nice and pretty and everything. Uh, and there's even this like blocky looking, like it's, it's hard to describe in relevance. It's, um, it's a blocky piece of metal, like a box, except as you step up to the counter and look on the other side of it, there seems to be these little dials all over it with what look like numerical and alphabetical symbols all over it. Um, and then on one side of it, there's uh, a, like a lever. Um, as you step up, you can see that there's a small bell that's on the counter. Um, and as you look around, you can hear again in the back. It's... Ring the bell. You hear the sound, like, stop for a sec. You hear... You hear this like another sound creak as the door next to the behind the counter opens up slightly and it, there is a large door but you're looking and you hear the door open but you don't see it opening and then you hear shut and look peek over the counter and look down the counter and you see a little tiny figure maybe two and a half to three feet tall walking out and you see that he has shut a door, but it's a smaller door within the bigger door. <laughs> and he, turn, he turns around and looks up at you. He's a very small, squat gnome uh, with two large goggles on his 
on his face. One of them is quite larger than the other and magnified. It's like this one except is a is like a dome glass on the one in the front. Um, so the eye is just like really bulbous and everything. And he looks up and you can see he has a full set of hair, completely white though. It's frazzled backwards, uh, almost like some concussive blast has thrown it back, but doesn't. You know, um, he kicks off the goggles. You mean he has the blast back hairstyle? Yeah. Um, you can see the goggles have a leather ring as he opens it up, and you can see that he has two large, uh, brownish golden eyes, huge, um, like uncannily large for his head. Uh, he's very pale. Um, he has smile lines and wrinkles all over his face, and he has what looks to be like a chin strap beard um, without a mustache or anything. Um, very short. Um, it's well kept. Um, he wears what looks to be like a, like an iron tunic, uh, which to you, you know, would be used for forging and tinkering and stuff. It has pockets all over it. There's things dangling all over it. Um, and he kind of looks up and he says, ah, one moment, one moment, one moment. And he gets up onto this like little stool thing, and now he's kind of almost head level with you. <sighs> ah, welcome to the Bouncing Tinker. How am I going to help you out? My name is Tenman Tinker. And smile at him and slowly pull the scroll out of my pocket and unravel it on the countertop. <sighs> I need parts. Parts, parts, we have many parts, 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 parts. He takes the scroll and unravels it. Which scroll are you giving him? I'm showing him the scroll of the little spider. Oh, okay. So you unravel it. <gasps> Where did you find this? Oh, did you find it? Where did you find it? Where did you find it? He like starts pouring over it. He like takes up a goggle and looks down. Like, <laughs> he starts talking to himself in Gnomish, uh, which I believe you speak. No, you know, speak. I think I'm Elven and Dwarven. Yeah, I think. So you recognize it definitely is Gnomish because it is a Dwarvish language. Elvish common and Dwarven, yep. Okay, so as he starts to speak, you can see like Kate kind of like <laughs> starts giggling to herself, and because she understands him one hundred percent. And then he looks up at you and starts he starts speaking to you in yeah exactly Heimerdinger. Um, <laughs> it is it's Heimerdinger with a chin strap. Um, he he looks up at you and he starts speaking this rapid language and then like <clears throat> excuse me. Where, where did you exactly find this? Deep underground. Near the dark. Oh. I've never been. <laughs> uh, what, what can I help you with? I'd like to begin construction on one of these, and I need the parts and the tools. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> there's no parts listed in here. I mean, you got schematics, but you know... <laughs> He flips it over for a second. Ah, oh, yes, there's like a list on the back of the scroll menu. Hmm, interesting. Does it have a blown out uh, diagram? It does have a diagram on one side. It has a parts list on the second side of like everything you'll need to create this. Okay, but from a diagram, I could figure out what I need. Like personally, as a human being, like. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that, but the there is all the listings of everything you'll need to put together this piece, this 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 schematic. Here. Oh, I got you. There's a parts list on the back, but I was just like, wouldn't a diagram do that anyway? The diagram, it's it's small enough that it doesn't have the parts list on the same side. It just shows mm. you. It, it's like it's like a list, like a schematic list. So it's like A1, and then you go to the back, and this is the A1 part. A2, this is the A2 part. 3, A3, all that stuff. He says, ah, yes, I, I think I can help you with most of this. I don't know if I have everything here. Everything here. Uh, one moment. He goes down to the lower counter and like runs around and he like runs across the shop and starts grabbing different bits and pieces and stuff and he like at one point he like climbs up onto this pile of like what looks to be like some sort of metal scrap garbage and you see his legs dangling up as he like disappears halfway into it and, like eh, yeah, yeah. you see like a piece go flying off there's like stuff growing all over the place he comes back with like an arm full of stuff and like gets up on the lower counter and like puts it across and like sprays it out and shoves all the rest of the stuff that was on the lower counter just onto the ground yes yeah and he starts like putting everything out and says, uh, this is part of the list. I might need to do some digging up in the junkyard to find everything. Now, the materials needed for this are a little bit older, but I have seen this kind of schematic before, which means that I might have something equivalent. Uh, where right, we could probably swap it. Where this calls for adamantine, I might have steel. Where this calls for steel, I might have iron to forge for it. And you'll need to take that to the mainland to have them taken care of. But we can get something to work. <laughs> Might take some time. Uh, in the meantime, while I get everything together, would you like to browse wares? Anything you need? Absolutely. Oh, okay. 
I don't get, I get. And he pulls out a couple of different books and like throws them down. Um, what you see is he has scrap bundles, uh, construct eyeballs. Uh, he has what looks to be um, a couple of different schematics. Uh, one of them is for a three-foot construct frame, uh, humanoid. Uh, the other one is a schematic for uh, um, uh, a three-foot construct frame, the actual schematic for it. Uh, so he has the frame itself and then the schematic. He has uh, a very interesting schematic. It's called an auto-cranking underslung drum-fed sharp bolt thrower is what is labeled on it itself. Uh, it I don't like know what a, it is, but I'm getting it. It looks like a crossbow, uh, except there is some sort of drum underneath of it. Um, he has another one that is, you, when you roll it out, this thing is huge. It's a very large schematic. It's probably at least three feet long and about similar in height uh, in the paper is. So it's a pretty tall schematic. And as you roll it out, it looks like this multi-legged, like, barrel-looking uh, um apparatus of some kind and it it on the top of it it says qualish um so that's what you see uh he has uh different trinkets as well on a list uh one of them is an oil of repair there's an oil slick a forge oil uh universal solvent sovereign glue and a trap activator what the hell's a forge oil uh forge oil it's one it comes in one ounce of vials uh uh, the description says that if it's struck, shocked, or lit with fire, magic, or otherwise, it will explode. Uh, it's a very, very unstable um, oil. Uh, it does 2d10. Uh, uh, does 2d10 uh, uh, normal, or sorry, 2d10 fire damage when 1d6 force damage in a 10 foot radius. But is this actually meant for a forge? It can be used, um, possibly. Uh, make an intelligence check. Like, I'm thinking, like, superheat the forge quickly instead of... And after all, it is in the name. 12. Yeah, you could... You know that there... You could use this in a couple of different purposes. You could flash start a forge. You could uh, flash heat metal together. You could uh, sear metal. You could... Uh, oh, it could get up to that much of a temperature. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the universe It's kind of like a... Thermite, but in an oil form. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, fucking hate universal this. solvent is a like a milky liquid. Fuck um, that character. It smells like a strong alcohol. Um, because as you as you roll out this thing, there's like little sample pieces of each one. Uh, you can use an action to pour the contents of the tube onto any surface within reach. Uh, the liquid instantly dissolves up to one square foot of any adhesive it touches, including sovereign glue. Uh, and then it moves on to sovereign glue, which is a uh, another viscous white uh, milky substance, very similar in form. Uh, it forms in a permanent adhesive bond between any two objects. Uh, it must be stored in a jar or a flask that is coated inside with oil of slipperiness, uh, which is also the slick oil that you see on the list. Um, Does he have that already made up? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one ounce of glue can cover a one-foot square surface. It takes one minute to set. Once it is done, the bond creates a strong... Uh, a, can, the bond it creates can be broken only by application of universal solvent or oil of etherealness, or a wish spell. So this is, well, once it's basically together, it's together. Um, then there's a trap activator, which is a small automaton that, when activated, walks up to 120 feet in a straight line without stopping, uh, or before stopping, and, it's, and then it will shout, activate pulse in Gnomish, and releases a burst of energy that triggers every magical trap in 60 feet. Uh, it then falls over, if not destroyed by the chaos, it regains its usage every dawn. It's this little tiny squat little gnome thing. Um, <laughs> this is like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> as he's uh, as he's uh, digging through a couple of different things, he brings back a couple of more bits and pieces and gadgets and stuff for you. Um, where he then, uh, oh, hang on, lost it. Book. So that thing is like a mini gnome. It's like, it's like a little mini gnome figurine. You like press a button. It's like. Yeah! It's this tiny little thing. First it walks on your feet, and then it goes, <laughs> <laughs> and triggers every man a cacophony of madness. That's um, good. As he's, he, he like takes a second and looks around, he's like, oh, what did I, what did I put there? What did I put there? What did I put there? Ah, buttons! Buttons! And he starts running back into the back again. <laughs> you hear this like, this like warning sound as if it's like, you hear this, Something start walking through, and then the the larger door opens up. Uh, sitting about three 